In this video, we solve problem 6.2.14 from Nagel's Fundamentals of Differential Equations, 7th edition. We're asked to find the general solution of the differential equation. Uh, it's a constant coefficient homogeneous linear differential equation. It's fourth order. Um, since it is a homogeneous linear constant coefficient equation, we can solve it by letting y equal e to the mx. Um, this appeared on quiz number four for differential equations in one of the forms of the quiz. Now, since it's a fourth order equation, we have to compute y prime, y double prime, y triple prime, and the fourth derivative of our guess for the solution. And then because we're assuming that this actually works, when we substitute in y and these derivatives into the differential equation, um, that should be satisfied. If this is truly a solution, when I plug these in, I should get zero. Um, so we're going to substitute into the DE from there. Um, and again, the reason why um, we're assuming that y equals e to the mx is a solution is because when we take the derivatives of functions that look like this, we get other functions that look like this. We get constants times exponentials. For the right constant m, all of these derivatives um, multiplied by constants and added together will just cancel out. All the exponentials will be gone and we'll get zero. So we're saying to ourselves, okay, well, what would m have to be so that this uh, so that these derivatives multiplied by constants and add together um, would give us a zero. In order to figure that out, um, we will do this. We'll assume it works. We'll substitute into the differential equation and we'll get an equation that has to be satisfied by M if this is a solution. So that's the plan. Let's actually compute this. Uh, the derivative of E to the MX is E to the MX times the derivative of the inside, which is an M. And we take the derivative again, we get another m from that chain rule. Take the derivative again, you get another m. And it's fourth order, so we need to take the fourth derivative. So we're gonna have m to the fourth times e to the mx right there. And then when we substitute these guys into the differential equation, we get this. There's our fourth derivative, minus four times the third derivative, plus 20 times the second derivative, minus 64 times the first derivative, plus 64 times the function itself, which was e to the mx. We want that to be equal zero um, because it's these, uh, because y is assumed to be a solution of this equation. If we factor out the e to the mx, we get this. And exponential functions are never zero. So that means this polynomial must be zero. This is called the characteristic equation. And this polynomial on the left-hand side is called the characteristic polynomial. In order for e to the mx to be a solution of this equation, m must be a value that satisfies this equation. So if we can find the values of m, that solve this polynomial equation, then we'll have the corresponding solutions y um, by just substituting those values of m in over here. So we just, we just need to factor this now. Now, it's not obvious how this factors. So I would suggest starting by listing the possible rational roots of this. And the possible rational roots of a polynomial are given by the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. And our constant term was 64 and the leading coefficient is an implied one. So we're taking the factors of 64 and we're dividing by the factors of one. So uh, let's see, one and 64 would work. And of course, negative one and negative 64 would work. Uh, two and 32, three doesn't work. Four does, four and 16, five doesn't work. Um, six doesn't work because three doesn't work. Seven doesn't work, eight works, eight times eight. Okay, so the list of factors is plus and minus one, plus and minus two, plus and minus four, 
plus and minus 8, plus and minus 16, plus and minus 32, and plus and minus 64. And we would take all of these and divide by the factors of 1, but um, dividing by plus and minus 1 really didn't do anything. So the possible rational roots are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64, or the negatives of those numbers. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, and so on. Now that's quite a list. We just wanna find a value on this list that, um, that works, that causes this polynomial equation to be zero. Now, if I substitute an M equals one, I'd have one minus four plus 20. So that's 21 minus four. Um, and then I've got the negative 64 and the 64. So those will cancel. 21 minus four is um, not zero. So M equals one doesn't work. But I'm thinking m equals 2 may work. So let's try m equals 2 and see if that works. Now remember, our, our polynomial equation was m to the fourth minus 4m squared plus 20m, no, minus 4m cubed plus 20m squared minus 64m plus 64. M plus 64. And we're substituting in two for M and see what we get. That's two times two times two times two or four times four, which is 16. This is four times eight, four times eight is 32. We've got four times a 20 is an 80. This is minus uh, 128 plus 64. <coughs> negative 128 minus uh, 32 is gonna be negative 160. And then I've got um, 64 and 16 is 80 and 80 and 80 is positive 160. That equals zero, great. So M equals two actually works. M equals two is a root. And that's, that's gonna be very nice because it's gonna help us factor. If M equals two is a root, we know that M minus two is a factor of the polynomial. So this cute or this fourth degree polynomial, M to the fourth minus four M squared, plus 20m, or m cubed, sorry, plus 20m squared minus 64m plus 64 is equal to m minus two times some polynomial. Now, since this is a fourth degree polynomial and this is a first degree polynomial, this would have to be cubic. We need a third degree polynomial times a first degree polynomial to give us a fourth degree polynomial. Um, so to find that cubic, we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna divide by that. <clears throat> All right, um, I will use synthetic division to do that. So you set this factor equal to zero, solve for M, it's gonna be the corresponding root. And then you list the coefficients of the polynomial over here. Make sure you have all the powers of m starting with the highest power, and we already do. We've got an m to the fourth, m cubed, m squared, m to the first, and an m to the zero. If we didn't have all of those, we would have to add in a placeholder. Let's bring the one down, multiply, put that number there, and then add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Okay. So this is the, these are the coefficients of our cubic polynomial. So Q is equal to um, one M cubed minus two M squared plus 16 M minus 32. So this fourth degree polynomial is this times this, but since this is cubic, I need to find factors of that as well. Hmm, I've got a, an m cubed minus 2m squared plus 16m minus 32. We could use possible rational roots again, factors of 32 divided by, factors of negative 32 divided by factors of one. Um, I think m equals two will work, that's on that list. So let's, I'm not 100% sure. So let's try it. Two cubed minus two times two squared plus 16 times two minus 32 
is 8 minus 8 plus 32 minus 32, and that's definitely 0. So m equals 2 does work again, so that means m equals 2 is a root of this q of m, of this polynomial. So that means that m uh, minus 2 is a factor of this. And so you want to divide the m minus 2 out from this. Well, that just requires using synthetic division again from right here. So it's almost like we're picking up where we left off. We're putting the 2 in the box again. And we have the 1, the negative 2, the 16, and the negative 32. Those are the coefficients of our third degree polynomial. Bring the 1 down, multiply, and add. Multiply, and add. Multiply, and add. OK. So that means this cubic polynomial is equal to m minus 2 times this quadratic polynomial, or a quadratic polynomial with these coefficients. So it's going to be 1m squared plus 0m plus 16. OK, so you might be thinking, that was a lot. How do I get back to this fourth degree polynomial? Well, the fourth degree polynomial was this times the cubic. So we have m minus 2 times the cubic polynomial. And the cubic polynomial was m minus 2 times m squared plus 16. And so that's going to be a quadratic times a quadratic, which is going to be a fourth degree polynomial. So that's what we want. So this is the factored version of the characteristic equation, or the characteristic polynomial. This one can be factored in the complex number system but not in the reals. So we will just set that factor equal to zero and solve for m. But let's go back and, and list our steps. How did we do this? Um, we used possible rational roots. After we did so, um, we tried values of, of m from our list until we find a root. We want to divide out the corresponding factor to find the remaining polynomial. Then we try possible rational roots again. This time I didn't list the possible roots, but I just sort of did it in my head. I said, what are, you know, factors of 32 divided by factors of 1? And I, I looked at this and I said, oh, well, 2 times 16 is going to be 32. I, I bet that'll work. And so I, that's why I knew to try m equals 2. And I did get 0, so I knew that m equals 2 was a root, so m minus 2 is a factor. And then we divided out m minus 2 again. So there are actually two factors of m minus 2. And then we had the remaining uh, quadratic that happened to be uh, a sum of squares. All right, so we're trying to find the values of m that satisfy this equation. We've got m minus 2 squared times m squared plus 16. So we need to solve for all the m's. If this is equal to zero, we have m minus, or we have m minus two equals zero. So m one and m two are both equal to two, and we've got two roots associated with that because of that exponent there. And then if this guy is equal to zero, then m squared has to be negative sixteen. And if we take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus, we get m equals plus or minus the square root of negative sixteen, which is four times i because of the negative under the radical. This is 0 plus or minus 4i, so that's alpha plus or minus beta i, where alpha is 0, beta is 4. Um, okay, so now we've got our repeated root here, and we've got complex conjugate roots there. Those lead to um, linearly independent solutions of a certain form. So since we've got a repeated root here, the first solution is e to the m1x, so it's e to the 2x in this case. 
And the second solution can't be e to the 2x because it's already, e to the 2x is already on the list and e to the 2x itself wouldn't be linearly independent. But it turns out if you multiply by an x, that also works. Um, so that's the second linearly independent solution associated with m equals two. Now these guys lead to functions involving sine and cosine. If you've got a complex conjugate pair, the first two linearly independent solutions associated with that pair that happen to involve um, real functions only are e to the alpha x cosine of beta x and e to the alpha x sine of beta x. In our case, alpha is zero, so this is e to the zero, which is one, times cosine of beta, which is four times x. And the other one looks just like it, but it's got a sine instead of a cosine. So that's enough for us to get our general solution. General solution is C1Y1 plus C2Y2 plus C3Y3 plus C4Y4. So we have y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 x e to the 2x plus c3 cosine of 4x plus c4 sine of 4x. And that will work for all real numbers.